Ah, silken silken now. Dragon Age Velgard is launching in just a few days. Let's dive into Thetis' major events and lore to prepare you for what's next. The world of Dragon Age mainly takes place on a continent called Thetis, a land constantly in conflict. Thousands of years ago, Thetis was inhabited by only elves, dwarves, and various mythical creatures. Among the elves, a powerful group known as the Evanuris retreated as gods. But these gods were tyrants, enslaving their own people and branding their faces as symbols of servitude. Lusting for even more power, several of the elven gods killed one of their own, Mithal, a murder that sparked their downfall. One of these gods, Finharel, the Dreadwolf, was a rebel who earned their namesake for freeing slaves from the other Evanuris. However, when Mithal was murdered, the Dreadwolf created a magical barrier that split Thetis from a magical realm called the Fade. This veil banished the other Evanuris but came at a great cost, weakening the elves who lost much of their magical power. After casting the spell, Finharel fell into a long sleep, leaving the elves to suffer under the veil's effects. Eventually, the humans arrived, waging war on the weakened elves and establishing the Tevinter Imperium, Thetis' first human empire. Many elves were enslaved, while others fled into hiding. Over time, the Tevinter Imperium, ruled by powerful mages and obsessed with dark magic, went too far. They performed a blood ritual so massive it tore a hole in the veil, allowing them to enter the Fade. These mages were corrupted, becoming the first darkspawn, creatures of instinct that corrupt everything they touch. The darkspawn seek out and corrupt sleeping old gods, awakening them as archdemons to lead them in a rampage known as a blight. The first archdemon, Dumat, led a blight that nearly destroyed Thetis, but it was finally defeated after 100 years by a newly formed group called the Grey Wardens, who are now responsible for stopping blights. With the Imperium weakened after the blight, a prophet named Andraste led a rebellion against them. Her teachings became the foundation of the Chantry, an influential religious order that viewed magic as dangerous, creating laws to restrict mages. The Chantry's enforcers, the Templars, were given authority to police and control mages. In Dragon Age Origins, we're thrown into the dark world of the Fifth Blight. 400 years have passed since the last blight, and in that time, the Grey Wardens, a legendary order created to fight the Darkspawn, have weakened and become scattered. With the Darkspawn rising again, Duncan, the commander of the Grey Wardens in Ferodin, sets out to recruit new blood. One of those recruits will go on to become a legend. Duncan gathers his recruits at Ostagar, where they join King Kaelin's army in preparing to face the Darkspawn. Here we learn about the Warden's mysterious ritual called the Joining, where each recruit drinks Darkspawn blood. Those who survive the ritual become true Grey Wardens, gaining a permanent bond to the Darkspawn, along with the taint that will ultimately shorten their lives. But soon after, the Darkspawn launch a full assault on Ostagar, overwhelming the king's forces and claiming the lives of both King Caelan and Duncan. The new Grey Wardens barely escaped death, saved at the last minute by the witch Flemeth and her daughter Morrigan, two powerful apostate mages. Apostates is the Chantry's term of mages who have rebelled against the strict control of the Circle of Magi. With the Warden's numbers decimated, our heroes turn to ancient treaties and travel across Thetis to compel the humans, elves, dwarves, and mages to aid the Wardens in fighting the blight that threatens all of Thetis. As they prepare for the final showdown in Denerim, the Wardens learn a grim truth about the blight. An experienced Warden explains only a Grey Warden can truly end a blight. If an archdemon is slain by anyone other than a warden, its corrupted soul simply transfers into a nearby darkspawn, reincarnating as another archdemon. 
But if a Grey Warden strikes the killing blow, the Archdemon's soul is drawn into the Warden instead, destroying them both in the process. This is the Warden's ultimate sacrifice, the only way to end the Blight for good. The Warden eventually battles against the Archdemon, killing it and ending the Blight. Some rumors state the Warden died in the battle, while there are some whispers the Warden is still alive somewhere, searching to find a cure to the taint within them. Regardless, that Warden is now known as the Hero of Ferelden. In Dragon Age 2, we follow the Hawk family, who escaped the Blight and fled to Kirkwall. Hawk eventually embarks on an expedition to the Deep Roads and discovers Red Lyrium, a dangerous substance that corrupts those exposed to it. In Kirkwall, as tensions rise between mages and Templars, a conflict erupts, igniting a full-scale mage rebellion that spreads across Thetis. This chaos leads to a conclave where leaders hope to end the violence, setting the stage for Dragon Age Inquisition. One of the magisters who tore into the Realm of Gods is Corypheus. The Dreadwolf's agents led Corypheus to an ancient elven orb, hoping that he would unlock it and in the process, the corrupted magister would be killed. This almost went according to plan as the orb caused a massive explosion, killing hundreds of people and opening a hole in the sky. However, Corypheus has powers similar to an archdemon, able to resurrect in a different body. An individual marked by the artifact gains the ability to close these rifts. Later, known as an Inquisitor, they become the leader of the Inquisition, a force dedicated to sealing the breach and stopping Corypheus. After the catastrophic explosion at the Conclave, Thetis is plagued not only by the breach, but by disturbing reports of earthquakes and collapsing mines along the Storm Coast. The Inquisitor and their forces head out to investigate where they encounter Vata, a dwarf with intimate knowledge of the Deep Roads. Together, they journey far below the surface. So far, they eventually discover that they are actually inside a Titan, a colossal ancient being. During their exploration, Vata begins using magic, a remarkable event as dwarves are typically unable to wield any magic power. Meanwhile, the Inquisition gains strength, managing to counter Corypheus at every turn. They build alliances, recruit powerful allies, and bolster their resources. Yet, Corypheus, along with his fearsome dragon, remains an unresolved threat. That's when Morrigan approaches the Inquisitor with a daring plan. Eventually, they encounter Flemeth, the enigmatic Witch of the Wilds. Flemeth reveals herself as the vessel of Mithal, the betrayed Evan Nuris, a powerful elven god once murdered by her peers. Armed with newfound knowledge and a plan, the Inquisitor confronts Corypheus in a final battle, ultimately destroying him and his dragon for good. With Corypheus defeated, they finally seal the breach in the sky, restoring peace to Thetis. But just when all seems well, Solas, the arrogant elven mage who journeyed with the Inquisition, vanishes without a trace, leaving behind secrets and mysteries that may forever change the world of Thetis. Two years after the defeat of Corypheus and the sealing of the Breach, the Inquisitor faces mounting pressure to disband the Inquisition. With the immediate threats gone, the leaders of Thetis are increasingly weary of the Inquisition's size and power. This leads to the calling of an exalted council at the Winter Palace where the Inquisitor's organization and its future are to be decided. But just as the council convenes, a new threat emerges. The Canari have launched a covert invasion. Following the Canari's trail, the Inquisitor journeys through some of the Thetis' most mysterious and ancient places. As the Inquisitor ventures deeper, they uncover long-lost knowledge about the elves of ancient Thetis. The Inquisitor's discoveries lead to a shocking revelation. Solas, their trusted companion, is actually Finn Harel, the Dreadwolf, the one who created the Veil. Solas explains that he intends to tear down the Veil, a move that could restore elven power to their former glory, but could also destroy the world. After this fateful encounter, the Inquisitor returns to the Winter's Palace to decide the fate of the Inquisition itself. With that resolved, 
they set their sights on a new goal, hunting down Solas to stop his dangerous plan. Then, nine years later in the Tevinter Imperium, Varric and Scout Harding finally track Solas's whereabouts, setting the stage for the next chapter in this epic struggle, the story of the Velgard.